Hello, everybody. Um, welcome to uh, the Road to Heaven AM uh, tutorial about non-exhibitor participation in the event. Uh, we're going, I've got an agenda. We're going to go over um, introductions, who, we, who the staff that are on the call are, and our roles, and then um, how we interact with exhibits, the different ways to do that, uh, the ways of interacting with exhibitors, and then ways of interacting with other participants. Okay, interacting with, oh, we didn't do introductions. I've skipped a slide. So I'm Alicia Dubois and I am um, an administrator for the web side of the production. Um, Baron Aaron is- I I am the event steward and during the day of, I will also kind of be playing the role of cruise director Julie, helping direct questions. And if there are connectivity problems, getting the person uh, hooked up with whoever is gonna be best able to fix that for them. We have Mr. Stisa. Hi guys. Um, so I'll be the Zoom coordinator. I will be actually running the um, uh, the the one-on-one -on -one Zoom meeting session. So um, if you have one-on-one -on -one scheduled with people, you will be seeing me that day. <laughs> I call you our Zoom wizard. <laughs> and we have um, Mistress Kyrie. Do you want to introduce yourself? Um, yeah, I'm Kyrie. I am um, actually the uh, event steward for the physical Athenaeum. So um, I am joined this part of the team as the staff and also helping with communication to the participants and the exhibitors. Excellent. Okay. Let's talk about interacting with exhibitors. You can do this right now today. You can go to this URL, which is the Athenaeum website slash exhibits, and view the exhibits that are uh, all that have already been published. The I think we are at what was the number? Something like 30, 30 something. Thirty-five. Thirty-five have been published so far, and uh, we have a very wide range of topics and very um some some of the exhibits are go very deep into uh, multiple areas others are, are more single focused but there's a lot of content out there to see um, you can make comments on exhibits at the very bottom of the page and that's at the bottom of every exhibit page the comments are moderated so you won't see them appear right away. And you do not need a user account to leave a comment. Anyone can leave a comment. Uh, do, does somebody want to talk about the kinds of comments that we welcome on exhibits? I think the, the goal here is to f treat them more as engagement rather than qualitative assessment um sharing mutual experiences if you have have dabbled in the same area asking questions about process if you're either further or less far along depending on you know what your level of exposure to the person's uh particular um method of uh, creativity is um but basically keeping it so that it's something that's going to spark a dialogue rather than stop someone dead in their tracks. Um, we, want, we want them to feel as energized about having presented their work and also understand that there are people who are just as curious about what they're doing as they're curious about it. So keeping them engaged and showing your level of engagement, I think is, is going to be the most helpful way of getting a conversation going with them. Yeah. Um, 
I would just add um, that, you know, you could feel free to ask them questions or ask them for more resources or um, say that you like that thing too. Constructive comments um, are, are all very welcome. And I want to show you really quick what that, what that looks like. So this is the main page of the um, event. And right here is where the exhibits are. They're all frantically uploading things. This is, these are going a little slowly. Okay, here we go. So we have, um, exhibits have topics. So if you're interested in a particular area, uh, some exhibits are in one category, some are in multiple categories, but uh, instead of scrolling down and down and down through all of these different choices, you can narrow things down a little bit by clicking uh, on a topic on the side. So let's say experimental archaeology. I'll just pick a random one. Right, so we've got six, eight, eight projects in this category. And uh, we can just choose one, click on the title to choose it. And each exhibit will have a table of contents on the side that you can jump down into the text if you want to skip around, but it will um, show you the overall structure. Excuse me. And then once you get all the way down to the bottom, oh, there's also a little um, bit of information here about the exhibitor and ways to contact them. Okay. Once you get down to the bottom of their exhibit, Uh, you can put, see the comments that people have already made. And then this leave a reply section is where you can comment. You just put your comment in your name and email. You don't have to, um, and hit post comment. You don't have to create an account in order to do this. Okay. Interacting with exhibitors. So the next the next way to interact also comes from the exhibit page, but you do need an account. So in order to register for an account, um, let me go back here to my example page. In order to register for an account, you just go here to this participant registration and you answer a few questions and you get logged into that. And then, so let's, uh, I'll log in since I already have an account here. And then, oh, this is my exhibitor account, so it brought me to my exhibitor homepage. You have a participant's homepage. But once you're logged in, Anyone with a with an account, and I'll, I'll just choose this exhibit for an example. So when you scroll to the bottom this time, you see this comment space, and it, it shows me that I'm logged in, so I don't have to put anything except my comment in here. I don't have to fill out the rest of that form. That's kind of nice. But then I also get this extra form where I can request a one-on-one -on -one conference and it fills in my preferences all, already and then I can add information like time of day I'm available or um, if there's a, um, a, a conflict you have, you know, some, some other commitment that you want to talk about in here. Yeah. And then it, you hit um, request con conference and it sends an email requesting a conference with this exhibitor to our scheduling team. The one-on-one uh, -on -one conferences are all going to be on Saturday the 18th between 10 and 4, and they will be scheduled for uh, 30 minutes each. You'll have your schedule by uh, sometime on Thursday, and that gives us a little bit of time to adjust if we find more conflicts or uh, some, something like that. Um, and you'll have your final schedule Friday. 
so that you know what times you'll, you'll be online. Those conferences will be held uh, over Zoom or uh, as a phone call if you've selected that as your preferred method of communication. And then the class that we're going to do this coming Tuesday and Thursday will go through exactly how that's going to work and you'll get a chance to practice going in and out of breakout rooms and things like that. So highly, highly recommend coming to that class. Um, the, other, the other thing that you got if you registered for a participant account is um, that you get to get to preview the list of unpublished exhibits and categories so you can kind of plan out whose project you're waiting for. And um, we will we'll have everything, everything published by tomorrow. So the sneak preview isn't really going to help you right now, but <laughs> that's okay. Do we have any questions so far? Nothing that I see so far. Okay. I don't get to see the chat, but I see when it, I see it light up when something happens on there. So I, I thought I saw it light up. Okay. The other thing is interacting with other participants. So from, um, and it's actually 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. is when the one-on-one -on -one conferences are, are going to be, but the hosted topical rooms actually begin at 11. Uh, the topics change every hour and the schedule is on that page right here. You can see all the, from 11 to 12, we have six rooms focusing on different art forms and the different topics. So this would be a good example if you wanted to schedule a one-on-one -on -one conference with someone, but you really didn't want to miss one of these conversation rooms. You could say, please don't schedule me between 11 and 12 because I really want to go to the metal and glass work chat. Um, what these are, does, does um, Joel, do you want to talk about, Erin, do you want to talk about what these are? Um, Mr. Christiana and Master Charles had wanted to provide some sort of um, social time to fill in the spaces between conversations for the artisans, um, but also rather than having just a, a random mass social, allow for specific spaces where people could gather by interest. Uh, some of them are by culture or by time period. And there will be a host who will sort of be facilitating conversation, helping intro one uh, people as they come in, but make it so that you don't have empty downtime between your conversation with a particular artisan and the next one. Um, it's one of the ways that we're also trying to encourage everyone who participates um, to show up in garb. This way, there is a reason to spend a good chunk of time presenting yourself in garb so we, we get as close to the true in-person Athenaeum experience as we can. The advantage here is, you know, for anyone who's been to one of the in-person Athenaeums, as great as they are, one of the things I noticed from talking with a lot of my fellow exhibitors is that your voice is very, very thrashed by the end of the day because you're talking over such a volume of ambient noise. And here, we're able to have a lot of those group geek out conversations, but we're not competing with a huge amount of background noise. So the level of quality of your interactive experience should theoretically be a lot better and a lot less strain on voices and on ears. Um, but we wanted, we wanted to give people a number of different ways of participating in the day, even if they aren't themselves going to exhibit or they're only interested in one or two particular exhibits specifically, there's still gonna be a whole lot of other people there that you can connect with, catch up with, talk about their projects and your projects in one of the themed rooms. 
and have a more total experience for your day. Yeah, and the hosts are not going to be moderating conversation or anything like that. They're, they're there to have um, some topical, um, interesting facts or articles that, that go along with the topic to keep the conversation going if there are lulls in the conversation or anything like that. But um, they're really meant for going and geeking out with other people with other interests and exploring new areas that you might be interested in. So. On a mechanics note, on the day of, my plan is to have both of my tablets open with Facebook running. Because if you're having an issue with con connectivity via Zoom, obviously you can't reach out via Zoom to let us know you're having a problem. So my recommendation is have a phone or a tablet or access to Facebook so that you can shoot myself or one of the other team members a Facebook message saying, hey, I'm having an issue. And that way we've got an alternate platform we can reach out to you reliably via so that we can hopefully address whatever that connectivity issue is quickly and get you back involved in whatever conversations you were taking part in. Yeah, and that, that should be part of the uh, Zoom experience uh, tutorials that we're gonna do Tuesdays. Tuesday and Thursday. We'll, we'll have the list of people who will be uh, doing monitoring their Facebook Messenger for uh, activity like Erin just mentioned. So yeah, uh, I think that is the end of my presentation. So if we if there are questions, um, we can we can do question time. If we want to turn off recording, turn off, um, uh, and turn people's videos and unmute them. I was going to say, if anybody has any questions they think would be good to ask during the recording so that people can, um, yeah, benefit from them later. Yeah. So people can benefit from them later. Go ahead and type them in the chat really quick and we can, and we can answer those really quick. And if not, we'll just turn off the video and, or we'll turn off the recording and you guys can you know, we can all kind of chat about it. I'll stop sharing. <laughs> then I can see the chat too. That's easier. Sorry, that was uh, the, actually the recording from the previous one. I was checking it for any um, anything that you might want to cover. I was checking for questions. Uh, but anyway. That's just disturbing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then why don't we why don't we stop the recording oh, and then we can Phelan's got a question. Or he has a thumbs up. I don't know what that means. Phelan, did you have a question? He's muted, he can't unmute us. If you want to unmute, you can unmute and ask. Oh, okay. Oh, oh it looks and sounds good. <laughs> okay, cool. All right. I'll stop the oh. recording. Actually, wait what just curious. One question. One thing, comment actually. Um, just to be clear that this Salon and Athenaeum are two separate Zoom meetings. So yes. the URLs, the links are going to be different just because I know that's gonna cause some confusion the day of. Yeah, that's an important thing to remember <laughs> that it will be two different Zooms happening throughout the day. And yeah. 